Today at Free Field Training, we're going to be taking a look at my riot gear for work. I just got issued a brand new helmet because of some unfortunate circumstances uh, recently. They caused my other one to get all messed up. So we're going to show you uh, how this stuff is stored and the basic capabilities and what all of it looks like. Of course, we're going to start with the ubiquitous riot baton here. There's older versions of riot batons that you might be familiar with that are thinner. This is pretty thick around. And the knurling on this is designed so that you have twisting friction instead of pulling friction. Now, there's a video uh, very recently about baton retention I did. Check up there and down below for links, which explains why it has retention for twisting but not pulling away and what this leather strap here is for and the proper way to use it. Pro tip, don't be twisting it around your hand. That's not what it's for. But these batons are very useful, not just for striking, but also from being able to hold the crowd back if you don't have a riot shield, which are you know, sometimes useful. Next, we're gonna talk about gas masks. This one uh, comes in a pouch. I believe it's by Blackhawk. I have an Avon C50, and because of recent events, the cartridge is already installed. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't install the cartridge until you're ready to use it. I haven't replaced this cartridge yet. I've been using it for a while. And when you need the mask, you would pull the mask out, rip open the cartridge, take the plug off of the cartridge, and then you just screw it onto the side of the mask. So there's normally a rubber plug that goes in there, pop the rubber plug out, and then screw it onto the mask, and you're good to don the mask. Now it's stored, ready to go, so you can throw it right onto your face. And the idea here is your rubber gasket on the inside of the mask affixes to your face to make a seal, and the elastic bands on it are pushed around the front. One, to protect the plastic viewport from getting scratched or dinged as you're pulling it out. Two, to keep it from getting any contamination from the last time it used onto the inside of the mask. And three, because it makes donning this very easy. Sorry about the audio that's gonna get pretty bad pretty fast. So the Avon C50, the elastic on the back has a little nylon loop that makes it very easy to don this mask, especially if the cartridge is already installed. So install the cartridge that's not already installed, or if it's already installed, just pull this out of the drop leg pouch here Put your thumb through the loop, attach this to your face, and the mask is on. Now, next you need to check for fit, and checking for fit means squaring it on your face, and then you inhale while putting your hand onto the intake on the cartridge to make sure you've actually created a seal. Some masks allow you to put your hand over the exit vent and try to pressurize the mask in order to make sure you have a seal both directions. This one I haven't been able to figure out a real convenient way to be able to do that, especially with gloves on, because these slats on the front of the exit seal make it very hard for it to get obstructed, probably on purpose, so you can always breathe out. You can also attach a cartridge to each side of the mask in order to make it easier to breathe in, which makes it a lot easier to handle under uh, strenuous working environments uh, to be able to, to breathe air in because you're breathing through two cartridges instead of just one. But if you ever have to wear one of these masks while operating a rifle, you don't want to have a cartridge on this side because it'll get in the way. And of course, when we, when we doff the mask, we simply grab the loop on the back pull it around the front so we're not contaminating and we reset the mask for next time and drop it into the drop leg pouch which because of the velcro all over these drop leg pouches is actually a little more difficult than you would anticipate getting the thing back in most of the time what ends up happening is you use the mask and if you're in some sort of uh, civil disturbance type of situation you don't have a whole lot of time these end up just getting thrown into the trunk of somebody's car after you use them or you have to have somebody else help you get the mask back into the pouch. That's a gas mask. Uh, the cartridges on these are P100 rated 
and they're for CS and CN. So there's several different types of cartridges you would use depending on what the threat you think is going to be that you need the gas mask for, but the ones that we're using are, are mainly for chemical agents and for, for dust and crap in the air. Finally, we're going to take a look at riot helmets. Ours come in a little duffel bag with the agency name written on this side of it, which is why it's pointed to you that way. It unzips and unzips from one side to the other, so the entire top and sides of the bag open up. And then to protect the plastic face shield, which is very subject uh, to scratching and makes it almost impossible to see through, you can see I keep a little foam bubble wrap type of stuff around it, and you can see that it's already got a little scratched up, even in the foam bubble wrap stuff. And then the helmet itself is just knock protection and face protection. So it keeps, there's a, there's a rubber gasket up here that keeps anything, any liquid that falls on the helmet from dripping down into your face. And this keeps any spit or splatter or uh, rocks, which is what happened in the last one, from hitting you, from, from making it to your face without having to go through this polycarbonate lens. This polycarbonate lens is not, this is not bulletproof glass or anything. It's fairly thin. Uh, the helmet itself is not ballistic rated. It's meant for, for bumps and, and knocks and bricks being thrown at you and uh, baseball bats and things like that. Or somebody get your baton, been able to take a hit from a baton without getting knocked unconscious. So these helmets go on fairly easily. Just put the puppy on your head. Try not to touch the screen of it to keep it from getting scratched up from any dirt or mess that might be on your hands or on your gloves. And then there's a clip down below, and of course, mine is pre-adjusted to be able to put it on. And as usual, it's a pain even if you know how to do it. There's a little clip down here. And buttons on either side. Here's the clip. There's the receptacle for it. You pop it in and it pops into place. And then to release it, you just push in on both sides. A lot easier to do when you can see it. When you've got it on your head, it's a little more of a pain in the butt. But I like to always try all of these things before you get into the situation that you might need it and make sure everything's properly adjusted and stored away. So when it's time to go, you can just yank and go. Also inside this pouch, I like to keep a drop link for the gas mask. So this I can attach onto my belt and drop the gas mask lower. I don't generally need to. I can generally attach this to my belt and have plenty of space. And also carry a pair of safety glasses still in the packaging so that they're not scratched up. Uh, this is one of those things that you kind of learn the hard way on the job that uh, even with the face shield, it might not always give you uh, perfect protection for your eyes. And if this face shield gets broken or you pull it out and it's scratched or somebody drops 400 pounds of stuff on the back of it in the back of a car because people are loading stuff in to go to an emergency and it cracks the shield on your helmet and you can't use it because it's broken. It's nice to at least have some sort of eye protection. After the recent events, I may upgrade these to a full face set of goggles in the very near future. So we'll take a look inside the helmet. So you can see there's just foam pad lining in there. There's a hard shell and then a softer interior foam lining that comes down with some polymer stiffener in it to protect you from some glancing blows all the way down to your jawline. And of course, this foam lining is removable, although I I really don't see a circumstance where you're going to wear this long enough where the lining is going to get nasty and worn out before the rest of the helmet is destroyed. These aren't really meant to be a long-term thing. So that's my riot gear uh, and how I have it currently set up uh, with uh, some of the experiences I've had recently uh, to maximize my ability to get the stuff, get it on, and get out of here as quick as possible. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, leave them down in the comments section uh, down below. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other.
Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos, or head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on your videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are in the description, of course. We'll see you guys next time.